Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory bolt action video. In today's episode, I am going to show you how to paint the new Winter Fulsham Jaeger from Warlord Games in just 15 minutes. And so without further ado, let's grab our paintbrushes and dive right into today's episode. Attention Guardsmen, my ever salty partner in crime, Admiral Simon, has got an important announcement for you. This September and October, I am doing a charity walk along the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. We'll be raising money for two fantastic charities, our local hospice, Holton Haven, and also the Pink Ribbon Foundation that raises funds to combat breast cancer. As I hate camping, walking, and will be shitting in a bucket for four days, I will be particularly salty and would value any support you can give us. Please click the link below for our Just Giving page. Thank you very much. You heard the man. It's for a good cause. And you all know Simon from the Bow Reports. That's all for now. Move out, conscripts. So before we get into the painting, I just want to make something clear. This paint scheme is not going to be a golden demon winner. The point of this is to get our army battle ready. Now, what I mean by that is have something that looks good from two feet away whilst we're playing our games on the tabletop. On top of this, this color scheme is really quick and easy to do and very fast. So if you're excited and you've got your hands on some new bolt action third edition models and you want to get them on the tabletop quickly so you can play some cool cinematic games, then this is the video for you. But with that said, let's take a look at the colors we're going to be using today. So we've got Tidal Wave, Holy White, Hardened Leather, Warrior Skin, Grim Black and Absolution Green, and all of these are from the Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0 range. I have almost completely converted over to Army Painter Speed Paints for my infantry. For no matter what army, no matter what game system, I find them really, really quick and easy to use. Highly recommended. For the basing, we're going to be using some Sterling Mud from Citadel, although pretty much any muddy technical paint will do. And we're going to be zhuzhing that up with some grass tufts and also some flock as well to make a really nice muddy field effect. But let's get this painted guy out of the way for now. We'll just put him to one side. That's what we're gonna be looking forward to. And let's take a look at the model that we are going to be painting today. This is one of the new Winter Folsom Jaeger. He's wearing his big poofy pants. He's got his nice thick uh, Luftwaffe jacket on as well. And we have given him that iconic FG-42, one of the really early sort of assault rifles of the war. Now, after we've built our model, we have hit him with a primer and we have gone for my favorite, my go-to, the Army Painter, Matt White. I absolutely love this stuff. Ever since I started using it, it has become my go-to primer for pretty much all of my infantry projects. It works phenomenally with both the Army Painter Speed Paints and also the GW Contrast Paints. I've actually moved away from using uh, Games Workshop like Wraithbone and Grace here, and I now use this as my go-to primer for any kind of speed painting goodness. But with all that said, let's get the good stuff and start painting. And we're going to start with the tidal wave, and we're gonna be painting the jacket in that color. Now, once that lovely blue color has been done, we are gonna be moving on to the holy white. But one thing I just wanna say before we do, one thing I really, really, enjoy about painting these Fulsham Jaeger models is they're a little bit more bright and popping with that blue jacket. Often so much of what we paint with the bolt action models feels a little bit more drab. And of course it's meant to, it's meant to look a little bit more, little bit more realistic. But if you're someone who's looking to get into bolt action, but maybe you want a color scheme that's a little bit more bright, maybe a 40K player who's coming over and looking at something that it's gonna be a bit more eye catching on the table. These winter Fulsham Jaeger with their blue jackets are Perfect, and I'm really enjoying painting up a nice, bright, vibrant color scheme for Bot Action, which is one of my favorite games. But going back to that white color, and we are going to be doing holy white, and we're going to do it on his big poofy trousers, and we're also going to do it on his helmet as well. So let's get some of that on our brush, and let's uh, see what it looks like. Now, this holy white, it might seem a bit weird, like painting white over white, but it's actually essentially a very light gray, which just sort of seeps into the 
the recesses of the trousers. Now we've put a little bit too much on there, but we'll just spread it out, spread it out. But this holy white works really nicely on these big poofy trousers because of all the sort of the cross hatching on them, uh, and it really, you know, it it keep, it stays very nice and bright once it's dried, but it really soaks into into the creases in the folds of the uh, of the trousers. So now that we've painted the blue and the white, we've really done a lot of the coverage on the model. But we're going to go for the hardened leather next, and we're just going to do the 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 the, the weapon sling here. Now I've done the weapon sling there and I also realized that he had a chin strap for his helmet so I have uh, painted that in the hardened leather. Now lambast me dear viewers because I did actually forget one color and that is dark wood. We do have a little bit of dark wood on this model. We're going to be painting the wooden parts of the FG42 in it. So we're going to have a little bit here and for the stock sometimes you can you can do it in wood sometimes you can do it in black it really comes down to uh, your personal preference they did have some metal stocks they did have some wooden ones so we're going to go for wood on those on both those bits just to help uh, break up the black which is going to be a lot of this color a lot of this weapon color i should say So with those dark wood bits done, we're now going to move on to Warrior Skin. And I'm going to give you one guess on what we're going to paint Warrior Skin. That's right, we are going to paint the skin bits. So that is going to be the face here and the hands. We're also going to paint this ear in uh, the Warrior Skin and this ear in Warrior Skin. What's interesting is we're, we're not going to paint behind there in Warrior Skin. Because if you look, that's actually meant to be a bit of a, a head wrapping, a bit of a scarf to keep the cold out. So we're going to have paint a couple of his ears and his face and his hands, and that should uh, that should do him. So we've got all of that skin done and now we're going to be moving on to Grim Black. Now we are going to be painting the weapon, uh, the bits that are currently in white, they're going to be in Grim Black. We're also going to be painting uh, the webbing and we're going to be painting some of the, some but not all as you'll see of the pouches in Grim Black as well. Now the advantage of doing Grim Black at this stage is that it is quite uh, an opaque color. It, it's still a speed paint, so it will, you know, it will uh, still need that sort of white base color to really shine. But uh, any sort of areas where you can see we've sort of gone over, so you can see we've gone over here on the um, on the straps. They uh, they should actually look, they should look black, and hopefully it'll sort of go, cover those mistakes up. So I quite like doing grim black towards the end because it saves a lot of time on there on tidying up. We'll also be doing the boots in grim black as well. So this is what it looks like once we have done all of the black. And you can see those bits which I had got a bit messy with when doing the blue coat, especially like I completely painted over uh, these black straps of webbing. They they have come out really, really nicely. Now the last uh, color we need to do here on the model is Absolution Green. Now I like to paint some of the webbing in Absolution Green. I don't know if it's necessary, necessarily historical, but I'm sure I've seen history books of like Germans having like green pouches and, and bits of green webbing and everything. And I like to think with this guy being a veteran, some of his kit's going to be a little bit more cobbled together or he's going to have uh, acquired or scrounged a few bits up. So rather than having all of his gear in the same color, I, li I like to have it in a slightly different color, some of the pouches, because I feel like it adds uh, a little bit of a story, a little bit of a, 
an experienced, a bit of a veteran, hardened veteran note to the model. So we're just going to paint literally these two back pouches in that colour. And uh, it should help uh, add a bit of variety to the model. Again, it's a nice, it's a dark green, but it, it pops really nicely. And uh, hopefully it will, uh, it will look quite nice. But with that done, we have now completed all of the colors we're gonna do on the model. But we still have to do the basing. And the first thing that we're gonna do for the basing is paint the base in dark wood. So we're just gonna get a bit of that on our brush and just slop it on. With the base now dry, we want to start basing it. So we are gonna start by putting one of these grass tufts on. These are just some generic green grass tufts. I'm not sure where I got them from, but you wanna put this on first before you put this on because uh, it will make it sit much more naturally on the base rather than looking like a green tuft that's just happened to have fallen or been placed on the base. And if you try and put one of these on whilst this is still wet, it just won't stick. So we're going to go for a nice medium sized one. Ah, oh, let's go big. We're going to be a big chunky boy. There we go. So we get a pair of tweezers. Just, it's slightly self adhesive. So we're just going to pull that off. Go for the big chunky boy. Just slap that bang on the base right there. No problem. That is self adhesive now. So you can see that is stuck on. And then we're going to go straight into the mud and we're going to slot this on. Now, don't worry too much about if you get a bit of the mud on the grass tuft or on the, the boots or anything. It's mud. It gets everywhere, right? So we're gonna grab ourselves an old brush and we're just gonna slop some of this stuff on now. Now, whilst that mud is still wet, we want to sprinkle a bit of flock on. So I've got a couple of different flocks here. I've got some of this Mediterranean stuff from Geek Gaming Scenics. And I've got some dark stuff that I picked up from eBay in this sandwich bag. <laughs> so he doesn't need anything too fancy. Um, and we want to just put a little bit of this on here whilst it's still wet. Because then when the mud dries, it'll lock this in. Uh, now, we don't want to put too much on. Because the idea is it's meant to look like a, a muddy battlefield that's been uh, churned up. So just get a pinch of this stuff and just sprinkle it on. And because we're going for sort of a more wintry vibe, we're going to put the lighter stuff on first and the darker stuff on second. So just a little sprinkle of that there, little sprinkle of that there and there. And then we're just gonna reach into our, our sandwich bag of only the highest quality uh, eBay flock. And again, we're just gonna pick up a pinch of that stuff and we're going to sprinkle that on as well. And again, not too much because we still want, we don't want to completely cover up the mud. We very much want there to still be some prominent mud uh, looking stuff on there. And that is that. So what, with all of our, all of our flock delicately slash just slapped on there, we have now got our fully painted bad boys. Let's have a look at this guy up close. And here he is in all of his glory. Now, of course, the basing stuff is still drying. And when you look at this model up close and personal, yeah, it's a pretty simple color scheme. And there's a few areas where I've been a little bit messy. You can see with the black there, just uh, just sort of spilling over a little bit onto the blue. But remember guys, the point of this color scheme isn't to, to look amazing up close and personal. The point of this color scheme is to look pretty decent and pretty striking from sort of two feet away. And, and when we're looking at these models, at a distance, uh, they do actually, I think, look quite nice and, and bright and popping on the battlefield. And even just having a couple of these guys next to that, I am loving it. I'm really loving the uh, being able to paint a bolt action color scheme, which is you know is a little bit more uh, exaggerated, a little bit more bright, a little bit more striking. I mean, I do love bolt action models. Don't get the wrong end of the stick. Um, but they, you know, the color schemes are a little bit more drab and a little bit more realistic. You know, if you sort of compare these guys to some of the Americans that I've painted, you know, those American models, you know, they're, they're, they are very, very nice and, and the brown uh, coats do look awesome. But, you know, putting them side by side, you can see, you know, really, if you do lean into that sort of uh, that Luftwaffe blue on of the of the Jäger, that you do find that uh, they do look just really, really stunning 
on the on the bolt action battlefield and it's great to see uh, models and color schemes like that uh, becoming more common and more prevalent in bolt action but with all that said let's wrap this video up I hope you found this episode useful, but if you've got any feedback for me on how I can improve, please let me know down in the comment section. And if there's any other models you want to see me paint up and come up with one of these 15 minute battle ready color schemes for, get your suggestions down in that comment section. They can be for bolt action, all world, 40K, or really any game system whatsoever. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button. It really does boost this video with the YouTube algorithm. And also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a heartfelt thank you to alex dengal bon bon vert lord prior mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone try again brag John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible, and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.